Wondering which birds live in your local area? You can use bird data to find out. Hi, I'm Oakley from BirdLife Australia. In this short video, I'll show you how to use the tools available in bird data to explore birds that call your patch home. Bird Data is BirdLife Australia's national bird monitoring program. It's a digital repository of Australian bird records that spans over half a century, with over 25 million bird sightings and still counting. Bird Data helps us understand where Australia's birds are living and how their populations and distributions are changing over time. To get started, open Bird Data in your web browser. Think Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Microsoft Edge at birddata.birdlife.org.au. Log into your Bird Data account if you already have one, or sign up for one if you don't have one already. Once you've signed in, click the Explore tab at the top of the page. You'll notice a species list on the right hand side of the screen, which shows all the bird species ever accepted in Bird Data. Well over 900 species have been logged in Bird Data, which is definitely too many to wrap our heads around all at once. Next, it's time to choose the area you'd like to look at. You can do this in three ways. First, you could use the Area Layer feature. We think you'll find the Local Government Area set the most useful to begin with. Select Local Government Area in the menu, then in the Area box below it, search for your local council. For example, if you're in Tassie, you might live in the Kingborough Council area. Start typing that into this field, and then select your council. Now, on the right, you'll see the number of bird species displayed on your screen will go down significantly. This is usually a great start, but some councils span really large areas, or include a huge range of different habitats, so the list of birds might not reflect what you'll actually see closer to home. Instead, you could zoom in on the map by double-clicking or scrolling with your mouse wheel until it shows the area you'd like to search, and then tick Restrict to Visible Map Area to filter the species list to birds seen within the portion of the map you've zoomed into. Again, on the right, you'll see our species list here has reduced further. For even more accuracy, you could try drawing the area you'd like to search. For example, if you live in the town of Snug and want to know which birds are hanging around a particular part of your neighbourhood, you can click Restrict to Polygon and then click points on the map to draw a particular shape around your area of interest. Make sure to close the shape correctly by connecting all the dots together. Once you've defined your area of interest with one of these methods, the bird species list on the right will show only those species that have been sighted in that particular area before. With this list, you can sort, download, or print the data. To sort the list, click the arrow icon in the far right. Sorting the list by reporting rate is helpful because you can see the most often reported species first, and get to know these really common birds before expanding your scope. Sorting by reporting rate is a great way to focus on learning the most obvious and familiar birds in your area first. For example, birds with reporting rates below 5% are usually locally rare, shy, or found in harder to access habitats than the average backyard. Do remember that this list includes introduced species, not just native Australian birds. If you click download species list, you can save a CSV file to your computer to sort it or annotate it as you like. That's all you need to get started researching your local birds on bird data, but feel free to play around with the other features if you like. For example, you can refine your species list with the change of seasons by selecting particular dates or months, or look at other area layers like whole states and territories or electoral divisions. And I know that search for location field up the top looks very tempting, but at the moment it's best used for finding specific sites and features loaded into bird data for long-term users. So, if you're a beginner, just move around on the map to home in your area of interest. Keep in mind that landscapes can change within a short distance, so even a small area may contain many different bird habitats. Around Snug, for example, you can move very quickly from shorelines to estuaries, to urban gardens, and then to forested foothills. Some of the birds on your species list may never pay your backyard a visit, but it's still a great starting point to get to know your nearby birds. For example, the Australian Pied Oyster Catcher appears in our list here on the right, but a little research tells us that this bird sticks to beaches and is pretty unlikely to make itself at home in your yard. 